As the national coach when I was first appointed in 2011, we had a system that was, I guess you would, you would describe it as working in the dark. It was in the dark ages, it was on spreadsheets, it was shared around everywhere. Some people were using different systems, different fitness testing protocols, all of those things that needed to be basically <coughs> systematised. So that's what we did. Okay. And I think Marcus alluded to it before. We kind of had to realise the why. The why of needing a system that was going to bring our big decentralised system together. And Marcus, I have got an idea for you, wherever you are. I noticed that one of the continents missing there, well, part of a continent, the subcontinent, is India. I think you've got a really excellent opportunity there, but we'll talk about that later. Um, when India, India is a classic example of if they get systematised in their country, I think they're going to probably win lots of gold medals at Olympic Games, etc. But we'll wait until that happens. The why. There I was in my yellow and green. Um, probably, there's probably nine out of those 12 athletes that are now retired. So when I looked at that photo, I was quite shocked. Um, and a couple of them are still here. But the monitoring that's gone on with those athletes since that time has really helped us to, to get a great picture and have great detail and depth of knowledge of those particular athletes. And we're still investigating the ways that we can use that data to its best advantage. So the why? Working in the dark. I actually didn't even know what some of the training programs were of some of the athletes in their clubs at the time. And at that time, we were competing in the ANZ Championship, uh, which was a New Zealand and Australian competition against each other. Now, I notice there's a few New Zealanders in the room, okay? Now, please don't take all our secrets back there, okay? Um, you are our greatest rivals, as you know, and there's a Nepal New Zealand person over there, but, I'm, I'm one for thinking around, we bring everybody in together to learn and people will innovate and do their thing how they see it best to fit in their environment. So I always believe that sharing information is better because I learn more too about my opponents that way. So I'm going to check you guys out as well while the, the conference going and I'll have my people doing that too. The why, the why was and is that we had to change the diamonds mindset at the time into a more high performance mindset. No doubt in my mind about that. We were underperforming in many of the parameters of high performance sport. At the time, the AIS had a very uh, rigorous auditing system around different areas, physical competency, uh, technical and tactical and so on. So we did have to report an athlete pathway, et cetera, et cetera. We had to report to that as well. And I actually think that helped us to drive um, our, I guess, drive towards high performance and innovation at that particular time. So that group of athletes at that time have now developed into what I would say are superior world-class athletes, the ones that are still here and haven't retired, based on a much more uh, persistent and dedicated system of monitoring and also feedback as part of that monitoring system. So both have to come together. So the behaviour change really was convincing the athletes first up that they actually needed to embrace this new system of high performance. That is, I needed to know as the, as the head coach of a national program that Laura Geitz would be completing her work, completing her training, logging her wellness, doing the things that she needed to do in Brisbane when no one was watching her. And to me, that's the greatest strength of the Diamonds, that they do that work when no one's watching. And they are committed and accountable to our system and our behaviours that require them to be high performance athletes. 
So it was convincing the athletes too, and it was a little bit of a carrot and stick approach, I must admit. So what we had to do was actually embed the expectation of high performance behaviours, which included completing your athlete management system inputs every day, was part of what was expected of our athletes at that time. Now, for some of you in athletics, you'd say, what the? But that's where we were at at that particular time. And that started and was a great um, catalyst at that time for growth in our high performance system. The how, well, this was a big one. We could not say to all our states and territories <coughs> and institutes that you have to do it this way. That doesn't work in netball world. I don't know if it works in your sporting world, but I was just having a discussion yesterday with rugby here at rugby headquarters about the fact that the national program today has to work in collaboration and conjunction with the clubs and the states. So that's what we have had to seek to do and do that as well as we can. So to build our athlete management system, we needed to make sure we had input from a range of people in our system. And we had to have champions in those systems as well. And we had to bring them along to the journey and help them to see the benefits of this system for netball. And I think we did that very well. We watched triathlon and hockey adopt AMS and we kind of learnt a lot from that time. You know, the hiccups along the way were very interesting. They made mistakes, we learnt from those mistakes and we were able to incorporate the learning from those uh, innovations and changes into our own system. So that was a terrific time. Uh, myself, as the head coach, I had to drive this. I had to be the one that said this is really important for high performance and at the end of the day performance of the diamonds. If we're going to be what we set out to be, which was to be the world's best high performance program, full stop, then we needed to get serious about managing our athletes and the performance of our athletes on a daily basis. AMS gave us that platform to do that. However, as was said before, it's the behaviour change part that was the most important and that has to go alongside any new technology that is implemented in, into a system. It must accompany. So our education was extensive at that time. Once we'd built our system and we'd got input from everyone, then it was a matter of going out to each of our clubs and ensuring that they knew exactly how to use this system in the best way possible for netball, which includes obviously things like load monitoring and wellness, which were the two key pillars for us at that particular time. The wellness area was seen as a bit soft, I have to say at the time, but when I first came into the position as nat national coach, one of the greatest priorities for all the athletes at that time, after I surveyed all of them, was that they felt out of balance. They felt like their life was being consumed and it was just netball, netball, netball. Now, hello, that's the life of an athlete. And I can hear you saying that. But the recognition that people have lives outside of high performance sport, I think is very important. And I also championed that at that time. And so to build it into this AMS system through our wellness monitoring was critically important as well. So our athletes could actually express their feelings at a particular time in a human way that wasn't just a number on a sliding scale. I needed to know more about what the athletes were thinking at a particular time and that would help me with unlocking, well, you know, that describes that performance, that helps me understand 
why that training session wasn't done as well, et cetera, et cetera. So it helped to give me options to discuss and then to use the staff to help to solve that problem for that athlete or have that athlete as part of that. I think the, that's the other thing we've done extremely well is we've brought our athletes along with the journey. Because as I said to all my sports scientists when I first started with them, at the Australian Institute of Sport, and there's a couple of them still sitting and they're still working with me, so <clears throat> I think that's probably a great achievement in itself that they're still with me. Um, I said, it's not what you know, it's what the athletes know. Our science and our technology and everything else <clears throat> can only be used in a human context, and that's it. Right, this is my little innovation, my little idiosyncrasy, creations. I don't have goal setting um, sheets or feedback sheets. I have, it's a play on words. For me, it's very positive psychological preparation for a match performance. So we use the word creations. This is my creation and what I'm hoping to create when I go out on the court and play for the Diamonds, which is obviously a very special, intense, wonderful environment for them to, to do. So I do want them to feel a bit of that artistry around it. And in those creations, we also talk about not just the physical preparation that needs to be going on, but also the mental preparation so their psychological preparation for that particular match and also their responsibilities in their unit, which is our defensive unit or our attacking unit and also their individual technical goals that they have or creations that they have. So what we wanted to do was to find a way that immediately myself as the head coach could use AMS in a way that made my job easier and was so efficient for the athletes as well and was into the sorts of things that they wanted to be into. So we made sure we built this from the ground up. What was going to be easiest for the athletes to input into this uh, part of the platform and how I could speedily get that feedback back to them using the platform. So. That's where our creations and match feedback part um, has been developed within our AMS platform with the diamonds. It's also used in our national pathway as well to actually provide feedback from our national program coaches directly to the state and institute coaches as well about the feedback of athletes at camp. So it's a very powerful record, historical record as well as a development record of that particular athlete. And we were just talking yesterday, actually, around the table when we were talking about the presentation of how we can start to use, because we've got quite some quite a lot of data and, and record and historical accounts now. How can we use that to assist us in the future as well around <clears throat> making feedback more specific, making it uh, more relevant for the athletes, making it really powerful in terms of improving performance. As you know, the athletes of today, and particularly our female athletes, love getting feedback. But this was a very easy way for us to do it in an efficient way. When I'm on tour, I used the very first time I used it was in 215 at the World Cup. So yes, don't particularly like change as a coach. I like to keep things pretty routine, but I knew that I had to be brave and stand up and make sure that this system worked. So I, again, use the carrot and stick approach. Uh, diamonds, we're going to have a go at this. And we practiced it in our trial games in Newcastle before we moved into Sydney. And then we also asked them, how did that work? Did you like getting the emails on the day? So there's all sorts of things and information that we discuss together. Always with the premise that we're on about improving performance, 
about being the world's best high performance program. So that front of mind idea has to be there when you are in a process of behaviour change. And of course what I'm describing here is the fact that this platform works in both our international context but also in our Suncorp Super Netball as well. Interestingly, you'll see three international athletes there. So some of those international athletes are also receiving the benefits of our AMS system through this type of feedback that they might not ever have had before in their own environments. Uh, that's a part of what I think is our responsibility to growing netball globally as well. It does mean it's harder for Australia at the end of the day, particularly when the English are doing so well in our competition and then transferring that to performances in Commonwealth Games. But netball needed to lift its game internationally, otherwise we won't get taken seriously as a sport. I can tell you Rick Charlesworth tells me that all the time. Okay, netball, you're not global yet. And, you know, he's probably right there. It's not that we're not world class, but we haven't quite grown our game as much as we should have. So the Suncorp Super Netball coaches have, have got access to that um, creations feedback as well that they can use. <coughs> That's all locked and secured, um, but our national pathway system is not locked so that we can share that information from the national program to the clubs. For those of you that know netball, <coughs> you may know that we've just announced our Australian Diamonds squad. We use the athlete management system to manage our performance ratings for all of the Suncorp Super Netball matches. In that system also, we have the ability to bring in the statistical um, data from uh, another mob. Am I allowed to mention them, Mitch? Yes, champion data. So we will also use that data to help us to pull together the information that's needed for the selectors. So this is another area that we've been able to tailor make the athlete management <coughs> system to what we require for the national program. It's actually revolutionised us. It's helped to make selection more thorough and more precise and in my view, fairer for athletes. Netball is a very difficult sport to select for because it is a team sport. There's not a, you know, a certain 100 metre sprint that has to be done and the measure is it. That's not our business. Our business is deciding on which athletes are going to best be able to connect together in a national environment quickly to produce a game plan that's going to beat New Zealand, England, Malawi, Uganda, South Africa. So at the end of the day, that's what our criteria is all based around. So our, our performance ratings give us the ability <coughs> to go back in historically and to look at that and to make comparisons of athletes against certain opponents. So our selectors can come uh, and we'll talk to our performance an analyst, Dr Mitchell Mooney, who's in the room, and we will say, we want to solve this particular problem. One of the problems we had before World Cup was which goal attack was our most consistent performer. So we pulled together our ratings and rankings, and we also matched that up with our statistical data around volume and accuracy and the particular areas that we really wanted to see. I love goal attacks who defend. I make no bones about it. And so for me, at an international world class level, I needed the evidence around that to make sure that that supported our selection decisions. So that's the sort of thing that we can do graphically, visually, using the AMS system to help to make our system of selection far more thorough, fair, and with a great amount of integrity around it, so that we're making the best decisions possible for this team that's going to represent our country. So hopefully you're happy with that. 
We've had a little bit of an issue around wing defences at the moment. And so what I sought my scientists to do was figure out which one is actually shutting down their opponent the most. So that's when we're able to deliver that information as well and, and also describe the consistency of performance there. Well, here it is, the power of <laughs> AMS, particularly prior to our benchmark events. This was a classic uh, issue and complexity that we have as a national program. We have teams that are competing all the way up to finals and, and being in a grand final and I'm just going through this planning phase at the moment right now with our clubs. Some of them will be finishing in two weeks time. They have already got squad members selected into the Australian squad and they then have to continue their training in preparation for our uh, quad series in September. So we usually have a six week period where we like to uh, prepare our athletes for that particular event. And as I'm always reminding our um, Suncorp, Super Head Suncorp Super Netball head coaches is that we play tournament play. We don't play once a week. Our tournaments are back to back. So the preparation for that is different and has to be more specific for those events to be able to have our athletes having the resilience to back up day in, day out. And our World Cup next year presents us with an even more critical uh, challenge in that we've got five matches in a row. We haven't had that, I think, for probably 20 years. We've always had a day off here and there. So how we manage that is going to be critically important to us. So as you can see, athlete A, not in finals. We've got our chronic load. Uh, going through there very nicely in our um, areas that, of, of where we wanted it. And we had a really nice build from July to August for those athletes to be ready for World Cup. Conversely, the in the finals athletes, uh, as you can see, there's that drop off in chronic load which indicates to us a normal historical thing that happens with teams in domestic years. They won't, they'll be dropping off in their fitness as they're tapering their performances for finals. Now, that's always the complexity and the balancing act in our periodisation uh, between the domestic league and international. And it's a continual issue that we have to come to grips with. We manage it on a very much individualised basis and we manage it on a collaborative basis as well, which we're very fortunate to have. And we've worked damn hard on that as well. Um, I myself as a head coach can't come in and just say, well, I'm sorry, this is Australia and you're just blah, blah, blah. We are working together with a mutual respect and collaboration around working together for the benefit of the athlete which is what actually the athlete management system should be all about. It's athlete centred. So as you can see, the chronic load dropped. So we had to build them very, very quickly after that final. And it was a big challenge because we had basically fried athletes after that grand final. I don't know if many of you are netball fans, but it was back in 2015 and the Sydney, uh, New South Wales Swifts played the Queensland Firebirds and it was, excuse me, a shit flight fight. It was an intense, over the top match, took so much emotion out of all the athletes as well, which is another area that I don't think we measure well enough yet, is the ability for athletes to emotionally recover after competition. Marcus, behavioural scientist, we'll talk later. Um, they're the sorts of things that I think are going to be in the future, the critical things, how we can assess the mind and that recovery emotionally and cognitively to be able to then go on to that next competition. This is a start for us, there's no doubt about it. This gives us the indication it gives us a historical record and an ability for us to be more accurate and discuss as a team, a performance team, 
those athletes and what's going to be best for them. And there was a great amount of individualisation in programming put in to those athletes in the finals, okay, according to their training age and so forth. I have had another couple of little stories from this about load and about AMS. One of them was prior to Com Games, when I nearly hit the roof, when I'll call my athlete A, uh, was played in every single quarter after we'd had a national camp. And it was explained to me eventually when I got the chance to speak to the coach that the numbers said she could do it. They're the numbers. As we know, they're subjective measures, yes, and they give us an indication. But I would never want to say that the coach's eye and the experience of the coach shouldn't be across this level of decision making. This forms part of the data that assists me to make more accurate and thorough decisions in the best interests of the athletes and what's going to be best for them and also then for the team and the program. So those are the decisions that I'm making all the time. This at least gives me the confidence to know, yes, we can do this. Yes, they're gonna be sore in that first two weeks, but that's okay. The other story was uh, we had one of our athletes with a migraine last week and it might seem simple but knowing that actually helped the selectors to understand the performance on the weekend in a particular match because this is a two-way street. We get this information from um, our diamonds through the Suncorp Super Netball season but our domestic teams also get the information too when we're on tour. So they know what their athletes are doing when we're away. And believe me, I know, because I get told that athlete's not doing enough, <laughs> they need to do more. So there's that continuous collaboration and two-way communication that's really important. And to me, underpins high performance. We've used it in presentations to board. This was presented to our board last year. This was our holistic data usage. Don't want to, use, don't want to say the word big data because we haven't done enough big data work yet in netball. We've got a lot of data, but we need to do some work. But these are our indicators and our you know, amber, red and green lights 12 months ago. So clearly it showed us with all that data in AMS that we needed to do something about the illness factor. We had, I think, 50% of our athletes, no, actually 75% of them that were ill at the time mid-season. So that was really critically important for us to make decisions around what we were going to do 12 months hence, because that particular piece of information would help us to know the trend of what may happen next year when we've got World Cup in the middle of a Suncorp Super Netball season. So those sorts of things are really important for us for our planning ahead. So the illness one was a big factor and also this one at the bottom remains a major issue for us, the energy availability for our athletes and the nutrition status. So we did a couple of things and what had to change was the language and use of language around performance, that we needed explosive, strong athletes, not for want of a better word, skinny fats. And so part of all of that was part of that education process. So I'm really proud of us that we've got to that point in the green. And that's, you know, that shows us that this monitoring and this work that's not just about numbers, it's about behaviour change, has been an important part in the progression and success of the diamonds. We're still working with that one. We're still in the red with the bottom one, definitely. And the piece de resistance, the individual athlete performance plans. This is actually where I did do a little bit of innovating, Marcus. When back in the day, Mary Toomey, who was my wellbeing manager at the time, a fantastic high performance scientist, um, 
and supported me with this journey, very much so. We used our uh, ability to implement an idea and we called it individual case management at the time. So we actually got ahead of the game before the AIS actually compelled us to have these. So we'd had enough practice time to make sure that they were implemented and completed. But as you can see, and there I am with my glasses and my hands are out as usual, talking to athletes. The athlete is at the centre of this. The athlete is at the centre of AMS. And we are the ones that need to listen to those athletes. Yes, we often know the way, but we've got to make sure we educate them and help them along with that journey as well. As I said to my scientists five years ago, I don't care what you know, I care what they know. And how they're empowered to be better athletes and how they're empowered to perform better and be able to continue their improvement and their improvement journey to world-class efforts and performances. So our indiv individual athlete performance plans came about. We uh, have our own very idiosyncratic netball one. If you looked at it, you'd probably say, well, that's very interesting. Um, we talk about priorities in there. We talk about a mutual benefit for clubs and also for the national program so that athletes in our national program understand exactly what those performance plans are about and they help to build them because they are the ones that are going to have to drive them. As I said to you, I need to know Laura Geitz is going to do her work and her extra things that she has committed to doing through this. That's her herself has to do that. I can't be over her shoulder. AMS isn't going to solve that. But it's going to be an accountability system and it's going to help us to keep accountable to each other. And I've actually built high performance behaviours which includes completing AMS every day and it might seem simple to you but it was the most important part of this whole process it was actually making it one of the criteria for a high performance athlete in the diamonds you will complete your AMS every day because that's just bloody expected of the diamonds and that's what you're doing to ensure the diamonds are successful that you're completing that, you're doing your work, you're completing your extra sessions, your Pilates or whatever it else it is. The other area I'm really proud of in the individual athlete performance plans is that I've embedded well-being and off-court requirements into it right from the start. I've never wanted to coach just athletes. I've always wanted to coach people. That's why I'm so pleased that Marcus has developed with his team the human performance platform because we're humans, we are not robots, we are not just numbers and that's why this is so exciting to me and what we can achieve in the future because I think they're the innovations that are going to make a difference into the future. And you know, engaging and motivating your athletes Absolutely, that's something that we still need to come to grips with, particularly with this. We would like these to be very easy, user-friendly plans that are on their phones because that's what they're on all the time. So that they can quickly go back and check their priority areas of training, the things that they've agreed to do, the technical areas that they need to keep improving and asking questions about that and asking their coaches Okay, Lisa, and we decided to work on a little bit of this. How about we work on this in our individual sessions or whatever it might be? The other innovation I can see for the future, and it's something that we've used in the Diamonds in terms of our communication being a decentralised program, is the sharing of our performance analysis information. Or, in the old days, homework. So how we can use AMS to underpin that more strongly is something that I'm going to need to talk to my performance staff about for the future. That, in a nutshell, 
is underpinning the diamond's excellence over the past six years. We've been world number one since 2013. We've had 90% win, win loss records in that period of time. And yes, we do play New Zealand a lot, but it's still world class sport and it requires sustained and persistent and determined and driven leadership from the top, which includes me, but also myself to empower our team of um, athletes, our team of scientists, and our team of coaches around our country. We work that together, we're really powerful. And I think this commitment to AMS has been a great example of that. And that's why I agreed to speak today, Marcus.